Today is Wednesday, February 14th. We're talking about a historic, controversial impeachment over immigration policies, and now what happens next. Also, an update on the back and forth in Congress over sending U.S. aid to war efforts overseas. Plus, why rideshare drivers are going on strike. How much Americans are spending on their Valentines today. And how this year's Super Bowl broke records. Those stories and even more news to know in today's episode. Welcome, welcome to The Newsworthy. All the day's news in around 10 minutes. Fast, fair, fun, and on the go. I'm Erica Mandy. Thanks so much for being here. You ready? Let's do this. For the first time in nearly 150 years, a top U.S. cabinet secretary has been impeached. The U.S. House voted, mostly on party lines, to impeach Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas. You'll remember the House already voted last week and the measure failed. But it was brought up again yesterday, since House Majority Leader Steve Scalise returned to Congress this week after receiving cancer treatment. And his yes vote helped the measure pass 214 to 213. The GOP has been pursuing the impeachment for more than a year, saying Mayorkas has willfully refused to enforce the nation's immigration laws, pointing to a record number of illegal crossings at the southern border in the past few years. Mayorkas has called those allegations false and has defended his record. In a statement after the vote, President Biden said, quote, history will not look kindly on House Republicans for their blatant act of unconstitutional partisanship. Mayorkas is expected to be acquitted in the Democratic-controlled Senate, where a two-thirds supermajority would be needed to remove him from office. A multi-billion dollar foreign aid bill that includes money for Ukraine, Israel, and civilians in conflict zones has passed a key hurdle. The Senate advanced it in a vote of 70 to 29. And with that, President Biden and a bipartisan group of lawmakers, including the top Senate Republican, urged the House to take it up too. But it's not clear if the GOP speaker will allow that to happen. Speaker Mike Johnson said yesterday that the House will be working on more important matters and that any national security legislation, quote, must recognize that national security begins at our own border. Though you will remember, the original bill did include measures to tighten border security, but Republicans voted it down. They said it did not go far enough. Overall, this new measure is worth more than $95 billion. About $60 billion of it would go to Ukraine, another $14 billion to Israel for its war against Hamas, and almost $10 billion would go to help the people living in combat zones, like Palestinians in Gaza. By the way, another option could be on the table soon. Some Republicans said former President Trump brought up the idea of offering a loan to Ukraine instead of an investment. So some members of the GOP say they're getting to work on that idea now, to be continued. Former New York Congressman Tom Suozzi is heading back to Washington. The Democrat won a special election last night to replace former Republican Congressman George Santos, who was expelled for ethics violations. And that means the already thin Republican majority in the House just became even thinner. So the GOP can now only afford to lose two votes to advance partisan legislation. And they might now face greater pressure to compromise with Democrats. Swazi is going to serve out the remainder of Santos's term, which ends in January of next year. Then he's expected to run again. The CDC is apparently thinking about loosening up some of its COVID-19 recommendations. As The Washington Post reports, under the proposed guidelines, the CDC would no longer suggest Americans who have tested positive for COVID-19 isolate for five days before returning to work or school. Instead, they might return to their routines if they've been fever-free for at least 24 hours without medication, That's the same standard that's applied for flu or RSV cases now. Supporters say there's no doubt the COVID-19 landscape has changed since the early days of the virus, since now most people have developed a level of immunity. And that warrants a shift to a more practical approach. Plus, they say few people are sticking to the five-day guidelines anyway. But some infectious disease experts say they worry about scaling back, since they don't want Americans to interpret this new advice to mean COVID-19 is no longer a threat. Even now, deaths from COVID-19 have been two to four times as common as those from the flu among seniors. Plus, there are still concerns about people getting long COVID since there's no treatment option for it yet. Either way, this new shift is still under consideration. Officials say if they do move forward, that's likely to happen in April. Until then, the recommendation is still to isolate for five days and wear a mask around others for 10. We have more news for you still coming up. But first, a message from our sponsor, ZocDoc. We all know life gets busy, but I do think it's important to treat ourselves every now and then. Just the other day, I got away to get a haircut and my nails done and get a nice coffee, and it really just felt so lovely. But here's the thing. Having a great doctor should not just be a luxury that you only get here and there. 
I think it's a necessity for every appointment and every condition. This is our health, after all. Enter ZocDoc, the place where you can find and book doctors from tens of thousands of top-tier choices, all with verified patient reviews. ZocDoc is a free app and website where you can search and compare highly rated in-network doctors near you and instantly book appointments with them online. Don't settle. Go for the best and find the right doctor for you. Every time I need to find a new type of doctor, I'll search ZocDoc for who is nearby, takes my insurance, and has great reviews. Go to ZocDoc.com newsworthy and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash newsworthy. ZocDoc dot com slash newsworthy. Now back to the news. It's a good day to celebrate love. And a lot of Americans are doing so by spending money. The National Retail Federation says more than half of U.S. consumers plan to take part in Valentine's Day today. And that's expected to bring in nearly $26 billion in spending. Flowers, candy, and greeting cards still top the list of main gifts. But this year, new spending records are expected for jewelry, clothing, and evenings out, too. And some people are going for more non-traditional gifts focused on experiences. Another growing trend is bringing the holiday beyond romantic relationships. More and more people are using Valentine's Day to honor friendships, family, or themselves. And then there are those participating in the anti-Valentine's Day movement. For example, the San Antonio Zoo has a fundraiser that will symbolically name a roach or rodent after your ex, then feed it to one of the zoo animals. This year, by the way, the holiday is also going to be a little different for Catholics. That's because Ash Wednesday is falling on Valentine's Day, too. And traditionally, Ash Wednesday is meant to be a day of fasting and abstinence. You may see people with smudges of ashes on their foreheads today, which is part of the tradition, and many will choose to give something specific up for Lent. The season of Lent is meant to be a reflection and preparation leading up to Easter, which this year falls on March 31st. Today, thousands of drivers for ride-sharing platforms, Uber and Lyft, and the food delivery app DoorDash are expected to go on strike all around the country. Some drivers say they're planning not to work the entire day, while others will hit pause for a few hours. They're protesting because they say their wages have gone down, in part because of upfront fares, and in some places an oversupply of drivers. Plus, they've raised safety concerns. And they chose Valentine's Day on purpose, since there's typically extra rider demand on the holiday. In response, Uber says most drivers are actually satisfied with their experience and that protests rarely have an impact on business. While Lyft said it is working to improve things for drivers with things like a new minimum earnings guarantee. So far, no comment from DoorDash. ChatGPT is rolling out its newest update that lets it remember or forget things from all of your conversations for the next chat. The idea is the chatbot will take what it learns between chats so it can give more relevant responses. So as you talk to ChatGPT, you can ask it to remember something specific or let it pick up certain details itself. For example, it could remember the certain tone, voice, and format you prefer for all your work-related tasks. Or if you mostly drive instead of use public transportation, it can keep that in mind when giving you directions. But OpenAI says its memory feature can be disabled at any time from the settings menu. You can also delete specific memories or clear all of them. Still, there's some concern about ChatGPT accumulating a lot of sensitive personal details over time, especially since the memory feature is on by default. But OpenAI says it's taking steps to steer ChatGPT away from proactively remembering certain information, like health details, unless a user explicitly asks it to. For a more private experience, though, OpenAI also says it's rolling out a new temporary chat feature. Both that feature and the new memory controls have gone out to a small portion of users so far. A broader rollout is coming soon. ESPN has scored another massive new rights deal. This time it's for the college football playoff, and reports say it's worth $7.8 billion. The extension apparently starts in 2026 and will keep the postseason on ESPN through the 2031 season. This comes as the college football playoff moves from four teams to 12 this season, including the six highest-ranked conference champions. The new agreement is worth substantially more money than the last one for half the duration of the last deal. But it's not just about getting viewers. USA Today says this gives ESPN so much clout in the world of college sports that it will play an outsized role, even in determining the makeup of major conferences. The celebration continues today for the Kansas City Chiefs. The Super Bowl championship parade is happening on the streets of KC, with all the players, coaches, and huge crowds of fans in attendance. Even Kansas City area schools have canceled classes today. The parade kicks off at 11 a.m. local time and will end with a victory rally at Union Station. There has been some speculation that pop star Taylor Swift might be there to support her boyfriend, Chiefs tight end Travis Kelsey, but it's actually unlikely since she's resuming her Eras tour in Australia on Friday. 
Plus, the Kansas City manager said he may have already asked her team of people to skip it since it would take a whole other level of security to handle the kinds of crowds who would show up to see both the Chiefs and Taylor Swift. Either way, there's expected to be a lot of interest. Already, Sunday's big game ended up being the most watched television broadcast in a generation. CBS says Super Bowl 58 averaged about 123.5 million viewers. That's more viewers than any other television event since the Apollo 11 moon landing in 1969. And it caps off a record season for NFL viewership overall. Today, the NFL Network will televise the Chiefs' victory parade, and it will be available for streaming on NFL.com. That's it for the main news today, so now it's time for Work Wednesday, when we break down one interesting career or work-related news story every Wednesday. But first, a quick break. Taking care of your health is not always easy, but it should at least be simple. That's why for the last year, I've been drinking AG1 daily. It's just one scoop mixed in water once a day, every day, and it makes me feel energized. And that's because each serving of AG1 delivers my daily dose of vitamins, minerals, pre and probiotics, and more. It's a powerful, healthy habit that's also powerfully simple. I often feel like I'm juggling a lot between work and family, so it's good to know that I have AG1 to give me that extra boost of energy and cover my nutritional basis with high-quality ingredients. Plus, I can keep up the habit without a lot of hassle. I need something quick and convenient, but also beneficial, and AG1 is just that. If there's one product I had to recommend to elevate your health, it's AG1, and that's why I partnered with them for so long. So if you want to take ownership of your health, start with AG1. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase exclusively at drinkag1.com newsworthy. That's drinkag1.com newsworthy. Check it out. Okay, now back to Work Wednesday. TikTok is apparently inspiring a new workplace fashion trend that's become especially popular with Gen Z. It's called the office siren aesthetic. If you haven't heard of it before, you've probably seen it 20 or 30 years ago. It includes pencil skirts, stilettos, turtlenecks, chunky jewelry, and bold red lips. Think Rachel Green from Friends or Samantha Jones from Sex and the City. And TikTokers say it's challenging modern workplace culture. One influencer told Who What Where she and other young women have been told they have to adapt to masculine dress codes to be respected. But they're taking a more feminine, stylish approach instead. And a lot of people have praised the shifts. But others see the style as being inappropriate for the office. So some influencers are suggesting starting with a measured approach, if you like this, and determine for yourself what would actually be considered okay at your workplace. All right, thank you so much for joining us today. And on this Valentine's Day, I just want to take a moment to say how much I appreciate you for listening and supporting the work we do here. And if you feel like spreading the love for the newsworthy today, we are always so, so grateful. Maybe tell someone else about the show or check out our merch by going to thenewsworthy.com merch. All right, we'll catch you up on more news to know tomorrow. Until then, have a great day. <laughs> <laughs>